want to tell you about an old friend. Her name is Colleen. Uh, we're friends for a long time. We met uh, in church. I knew her kind of from a distance, but Colleen was vivacious uh, and bright and energetic and diligent and reliable, just a really quality person. And we became better friends when we both served on uh, a drama team at church for years, and I really got to see her in action. This is a girl who kind of whatever she put her mind to, she was going to give it 100% and just really great character. And we kind of, we didn't lose touch, but I, uh, you know, I left uh, the DC area and I went down uh, to Campus Crusade and was running all over the world. And at a certain point, I heard that Colleen had, uh, had she had cancer and she was battling cancer. And that's always troublesome and you just don't know how it's gonna turn out. And then I, I come back to DC, I'm, I'm with ICC and um, I know it's more serious and it's been a long battle. And after about five years of the battle, the long drawn out battle with chemo and you know, it's so debilitating, you've seen friends and loved ones and maybe even you're going through it. So very tough struggle. And at a certain point, Colleen said, you know what, I, this is not a battle that can be won and uh, we're getting closer to the end. And she kind of took control of her whole life and said, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to go home and be with the father. She knew where she was going. And she said, I'm just gonna stop the fight. And she declined very quickly once she stopped the chemo. And uh, so her husband, who's a good friend, called and said, hey, listen, you know, Colleen's almost gone. And so if you wanna say uh, your goodbyes, you should come by. So packed up the family and, and we all went, including my kids. I don't wanna hide death from them. I want them to see and understand this is part of life and to understand for themselves uh, you know, to understand our end and to say, you, you really have to fix that. That's the biggest job in life. And so we came into their home and Colleen was in a hospital bed in the living room. And I think you already know this, but death is not pretty. And uh, Colleen was already unconscious. And uh, so, but uh, a number of friends are around and we we're around the bedside and we're stroking her hair and uh, just remembering things with her. Uh, trusting she can still hear us, even, the, even if her body's kind of shut down. And we were going to leave, and then some other friends there said, hey, why don't we gather together? Why don't we gather around Colleen and sing? And that was a very special, special moment. It was a privilege to be invited into that scene and into her last days. And so we all sang a song together and just walked out of there glowing. Uh, because you think about, you know, what was it? What was it that we were doing? And there were a whole bunch of things, but it was at the bottom, the bottom line is that it wasn't see you forever. It was, we're gonna see you later. Hey, we're parting for now, but we're gonna see you later. And in singing though, there was just this peace. There was hope. And it was also gratitude to the Father for what he has done and how he has rescued us from death. And I share that story because everyone around you is terrified of death. And you may be too, very common thing. And at this point in my life, I'm embarrassed to say I'm, uh, I'm scared of roller coasters, so I get it. But everyone around you is terrified of death. And so everyone is dodging and weaving and staying occupied and busy and doing anything they can to not think about death. And that is until the accident comes, uh, until the diagnosis comes, but inevitably it comes and then it can't be avoided. And then it's a very tragic situation. And I mention that because look, this is, this is part of humanity. And so that means it's everywhere. It's not just your corner of the world. It's not just the US, this is humanity. And that, that terror, because everyone feels like death is stalking them, that terror gets into all the culture and permeates us. And there's different things that people do to avoid it or to, to whistle past the graveyard, et cetera. But the problem is that that mentality can infect your mindset. And we can think as believers that we are heading towards death. And I talk, about my, I talk about this with my friends all the time because the verse I hang my hat on, there's a lot of them, but one verse is Proverbs 4.18. It says, the life of the righteous is like the approaching dawn. So think about that. Do you hear it? 
Do you hear what it's saying? Because unpack that first, and what does it say? It says that we are in the night right now. We're in the shadow lands. But as you get closer to death, you see the dawn rising. It's like the, the light is rising. We're heading towards life. And you really have to fight for that mindset because all around you, everybody's, everyone thinks differently. You know, everyone's pretending not to be afraid, but they're terrified when they have to face the inevitable. So think about that, dwell on that, hang on that verse and ask the Lord to open your mind and then go find someone you love who is lost and share with them the hope that you have in Jesus. All right, God bless you. Thank you for caring about your persecuted brother and sister.